Hey everyone, and welcome to a brand new series that I'm super excited about on how to make a doodle-ish jump game in Scratch called Dungeon Jump. So if I go ahead and click start, you can see that we are launched straight into a really cool looking title screen. We have this really cool background that is scrolling upward, and then we have a play button and our current coin. And then in the center of the screen, the main attraction is the skin selector. So as you can see here, if I go right to left, I can scroll through all of the different skins. We have this like cream version slime, the cat from my cat clicker, a mini night ninja, and a cookie because it's a cookie. And as you can see, this costs 5, this costs 15, and so on and so forth. This one is unlocked, so I'm going to go ahead and click play. Now, as soon as I click play, we are launched into this world. Now, the first thing you may notice is in the center of the screen, we have this nice score counter keeping track of how high we've went. So, there are currently five platforms. We have the default platform, which just is a normal one you can bounce on. We have have this wooden platform that will immediately break if we jump on it as you can see there. Then we have the spiked platform that will knock us out if we touch it. We have this slime platform that will launch us up nice and high as you can see. And last but not least there is this cool blue one that is always moving. Speaking of moving, every platform has like a 1 in 3 chance of moving left to right and it's random how much they will actually move. There are also coins that will randomly spawn above each each platform. As you can see here, there is a coin over that spike. Oh, here is a good spot for a coin. I have zero coins and I can go ahead and collect that coin. And there you go, I got one coin. And those are how you can actually buy the skins in the shop. And of course, if you fall off the platform or touch a spike, you will be knocked out. So I'm going to go ahead and touch a spike. <laughs> and it flashes and then game over. The score kind of does a cool wind up animation. We have this restart button that will just restart the game using the last skin that we used. And then we have this button which will go to the title screen where we can buy new skins and all that stuff. So let me show you what it looks like when you fall off the map. So as you can see here, it is super smooth and it seamlessly transitions into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when you buy things. So I need one more coin. There you go, I got it. I have five coins now. I'm gonna go to the title screen screen and I'm going to buy this cream flavored skin but if I buy this you can see that this turns into a play button and we can actually play as this cream colored dungeon dude. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and also leave a comment down below but anyway let's get coding. Alrighty so I am in a brand new project with four sprites. I have blank which is completely blank. I know that's insane. It has no costumes, no sounds, nothing. Then I have player which has two costumes. Default which is the little dungeon dude then I have default 2, which is just the dungeon dude flip to the left. I have platforms, which I have normal, which is just the normal platform. I have breakable, which is the breakable platform. I have breakable 2, which is the right side of the platform. I have breakable 3, which is the left side of the platform. And these are the particles that are going to spawn when you jump on them. I have bouncy, which is just the bouncy platform. I have spike, which is the spiky platform. And then I have moving, which is the platform that will move left to right. Last but not least, I have a sprite called a BG for background and I have one costume in it called bricks and it's just a nice brick background. Now if you don't feel like making all of the art for this game then make sure to click on the link in the description. It will bring you to a art project on scratch and you can pull all of these assets into your backpack. Now let's go ahead and start by getting the main gameplay loop going. So go into the player and add a wind green flag clicked and add a broadcast and wait block and change this to new message and name this one reset. Add a normal broadcast called start game. Now do a when I receive reset, we are going to go ahead and go to front, clear the graphic effects, show, go to zero zero, point in direction 90, also switch costume to default at the very top here. Put this in a forever loop and then add a repeat until under here. It will start, it will reset everything, and then it will do this until a certain condition is met and then it will restart it. But for now, we're just not going to have a condition. And now inside of this repeat loop, make a new block called movement with a colon x speed with a colon and now an input x speed now a label called jump height with a colon of course and then an input called jump height a label called gravity with a colon and then an input called gravity a label called friction with a colon and then an input called friction a label called turn speed with a colon and then an input called turn speed and last but not least check this run without screen refresh block right here now we have this nice block that will 
still handle all of our movement. So go ahead and put that in here. Now we are going to have two for the X speed. Jump height is 17. Gravity is negative one. Friction is 0 0.92. Turn speed is two. So now that we have all the inputs, we need to make this work. So let's go ahead and make it to where we can move right to left. So make a for the sprite only variable called X speed. Now you can go ahead and hide that and set the X speed to zero in the reset loop. Now we are going to change the X speed by one. And instead of by one, we want to pull out a minus and then a D key pressed and A key press. D key minus A key. So now if we go ahead and click on this, when we are not pressing anything, it's zero. When we press D, it's negative one. And when we press A, it is 1. Now let's make it actually be affected by move speed. So take that times X speed. And now put that in there. Now let's make a X position variable for this. So make a for all sprite variable called player X. Now we are going to change player X by X speed. And now in the beginning, set player X to 0. Now we need to add friction because this is way too fast. So right underneath, we want to set the X speed to X speed times friction. So how do we convert this player X to an actual movement on screen because right now it's just a variable we need to add a broadcast that will update so add a new broadcast message right underneath the movement and call this tick space a dash then a space name this player after we get all the inputs and stuff we are going to actually change the position of the player so add a when I receive the tick player we are going to go to zero zero and change this to player X so now you can see that look at this our player is moving left to right when we move our arrow keys now we have a little bit of an issue when we move to the left it doesn't flip to the left so add an if else in here and check if the x speed is greater than zero which means we are moving to the right and if we are then we're going to switch costume to default otherwise switch costume to default too now you can see that when we move right it switches right and when we move left it switches to the left now that we have the movement in let's add gravity now to do this let's add a new for all sprite variable called player y Y, and this will keep track of the Y position of the player. And now a for the sprite only variable called Y speed. Now in the very beginning, set the player Y to zero and set the Y speed to zero in the reset right here as well. Now let's go ahead and pull this out here and add an if else and put that back. Now we want to check if we are touching the platforms and the Y speed is less than zero, which means we are moving down. Set the Y speed to jump height. Otherwise, change the Y speed by gravity. Right here where we change the player X, also change the player Y by Y speed. Let's go ahead and put player Y in the Y input right here. Now you can see that we actually fall down, but as soon as we touch the platform, we jump back up. But if we go to the left and fall down, all right, we fall out of the world. Now let's make our player slightly tilt. So at the end here, point in direction 90 plus X speed times turn speed. So now you can see that our player will tilt depending on the direction we are moving in. Now, how do we make this a scrolling game? To do this, we need a variable for our sprites called scroll Y. And now in the very beginning, let's set the scroll Y to zero. Go to layer Y minus the scroll y you can see that nothing actually changes but if we show the scroll y double click it until it's a slider you can see that when we move it up the player actually is affected by it now it looks a little bit weird because our ground isn't actually affected by the scroll y add another broadcast under here and do new message named tick and space dash space platforms now in the platforms when i receive tick platforms go to and now we need two new for the sprite only variables platform x X, copy that, make another for the sprite only variable called platform Y. Click enter on both of those. And now for the X, do platform X. And for the Y, do platform Y minus the scroll Y. Now, when I receive reset, clear the graphic effects and point in direction 90 for now. If we show the scroll Y again and use the slider here, you can see that, look at that, the player and the platforms move. So now let's make the camera always follow the player. Add a new block named camera with a colon, then damping with a colon, and then an 
input called damping. Now let's put this custom block underneath the movement and set the damping to 6. Now in this camera loop, we are going to change the scroll Y by duplicate this player Y minus scroll Y, then divide that by the damping and put that in there. Now you can see that look at this, the camera will follow the player. Now let's make the platforms actually generate platforms. So go into the platforms and add a new custom block with run without screen refresh checked and then put the reset in this loop right here. Now we need a variable called is clone. Make sure that's for the sprite only and you're going to set the is clone and the reset to false. And now add an if else loop in this tick here and check if the is clone is equal to true. So if we are clone then we are going to go to the spot otherwise we are going to hide. Now we are going to in the reset loop repeat 15 times delete this clone so that way it clears out all of the platforms and stop other scripts in sprite. So in the player we need to add a new broadcast right above the start game and name this platform start. So the platform starting and the game starting are going to be separate. That way we can have it scrolling in the title screen. So in the platforms when I receive platform start we are going to make some new variables. We need a for the sprite only variable called platform ID and now we are going to set that platform ID to 1 which is our first platform. Next we are going to set the platform X to 0 and the platform Y to we need another variable called platform offset Y for the sprite only and set that platform offset Y to 0 in the beginning and then set the platform Y right here to platform offset Y and then change the platform offset Y by 50 and now create a clone of myself. Now when I start as a clone we are going to set the is clone to true and as soon as we do that that didn't work and then we are going to show for now and as soon as we do that you can see that a platform pops in right below our feet so there we go we have a Officially replace the sprite with a clone. Now let's make it switch to the costume. So add an if else underneath here and check if the platform ID is 1. If it is, then switch costume to normal. Duplicate this and check if it's 2. If it is, then do breakable. If it's 3, then switch costume to bouncy. If it's 4, switch costume to spike. And last but not least, a normal if. If it's 5, switch costume to move. So now you can see that this is the right costume. Now we need a variable keeping track of the total total platform count. So make a for all sprite variable called platform count and click enter. Now go ahead and set platform count to zero and in the reset loop. Now when I start as a clone, change that count by one. Now put a forever loop in this platform start and check if the platform count is less than 35. So that way we don't create too many platforms. Now we are going to set the platform ID to pick random one to five. Now we are going to chain the platform offset by 50 set the platform X to pick random negative 180 to 180 so it will go to a random X position and set the platform Y to platform offset Y and now create a clone of myself. Now let's see how this works. Look at that. We have randomly generated platforms all around that will switch to a random costume. Now there's a little bit of a problem here. Once we get up to the top it stops generating clones and that is because the clones never delete themselves once they get to the bottom. So to fix that problem we need to make a new block called go to with a colon and then add two inputs x and y. Now make this run without screen refresh and put a go to right here and replace that like so. And now in the go to go to x and y. So this will make it do the same thing except it's a little bit easier to customize. So let's make it check if the y is less than negative 400 then we are going to make a new block called delete clone and now put that in if the y is less than 400. Now in the delete clone we are going to go ahead and change the platform count by negative 1 and then delete this clone. So now you can see that once we make it far enough it will go ahead and start clearing out the old clones and it should keep on generating them up. So now it is actually infinite. Now there is another problem if you go ahead and look towards the top of the screen and the bottom all of the platforms kind of are clumping together. So let's make it actually hide themselves when they are at the edge. So in this go to loop move this down and add an if else and now put that back. Now we want to check if the abs of y minus the y position is less than 
zero one then we are going to go ahead and show otherwise hi and now you can get rid of this show in the when i start as a clone so now you can see that it does not do that anymore and they will not clump up towards the top of the screen okay so we have a little bit of a problem here because we are using a pick random one to five each platform has a equal chance of spawning now the issue with this is we get way too many spikes or way too many jumpy ones i want it to be kind of more normal platforms so to do this we need to make a list for all sprites called platform spawn chance now in this we're going to add the different ids so i'm going to add one 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 so that means that one is going to be common because it has three tries of spawning the id of one which is the normal platform now i'm going to add two twice so it's a little bit less common i'm going to add three once which is the bouncy one i'm going to add four twice which is a spike so it's a little more common and then i'm going to add two fives which makes the moving ones a kind of common ish one so basically what this is going to do is it's going to pick a random item from this list now what we need to do is instead of setting it to pick random one to five set it to item one of platform chance and go ahead and do pick random one to length of platform chance of platform chance so if we go ahead and run the game now you can see that it will spawn more normal platforms and less of the good ones okay so now we have a little bit of an issue so sometimes when we generate a spike a spike generates right on top of it which will make it impossible to jump so we need to make it to where when it generates a spike it will always generate a normal platform so we can actually jump over it so right here in this set id we need to put an if else and now put that under here and put this in the else side now we want to check if the platform id is equal to four which means it's the spiked one then we're going to set platform id to one so after the spike it'll always make a normal platform here is a good example here's a spike and it's a normal one right after it likewise right here is a spike right after it is a normal one so that just makes it to where it's always possible to beat this game now that we have the kind of base platforms in let's go ahead and start working on the bg so it scrolls with the player so in the bg at a when i receive reset make a for the sprite only variable called is clone and set the is clone to false now we are going to go to back layer, switch costume to bricks, and then delete this clone. Now when I receive start game, create clone of myself. Now when I start as a clone, we are going to set that is clone to true. Now when I receive the tick platforms if else checking if the is clone is equal to true so if we are a clone then we are going to go to zero zero make two variables called bgx and bgy make sure those are for this sprite only now we are going to go to x bgx y 360 which is our screen height plus bgy minus scroll y now take the minus divided by two and now pull all of that out and put that in a mod put the in the left side of a mod then mod negative 360 and now put that in this right here make sure yours looks like mine otherwise your scrolling won't work and for the actual sprite we want to do not plus 360. Alrighty, as soon as we start, you can see that the background will kind of parallax and it will match the scroll Y of our player. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.